Hey folks, this is Strong Games, and welcome to Total War Warhammer 3. Uh, today we're going to do getting starter guide for Karak Kadrin, uh, an Ungrim Iron Fist. Now, the dwarves themselves have a couple of um, interesting mechanics. One of them is related to the slave. underway, so if I go into this yeah, stance, I can actually jump all the way over here. I can just bypass all the mountains. So don't forget that you have that ability. It's very, very important for getting around kind of these mountainous regions, which can be kind of annoying. Now, the dwarves also earn something called Oath Gold, which allows you to kind of forge different items. Um, you can also get it from completing things in the uh, Great Book of Grudges. And so the Great Book of Grudges is a really important mechanic for the dwarves because basically it uh, allows you to basically improve the, uh, or keep your, your severity in the proper uh, section, and there are a bunch of these grudges that you start off with right away. And so, if we go in here, three, four, five grudges to start with, they actually, these can be kind of hard to read too, so I often make sure to read the, uh, the little pieces that pop up, but they're actually marked on the map as well. So these little pieces here, you can always just click on these to access the grudge. And you want to um, make these things a priority. Um, getting these, you know, going to take Karak Ungor, Karak Flag, Silver Pinnacle, uh, going to fight against Sylvania, uh, and then actually taking Nashrax Lair. These are really good things to uh, to focus on doing. In fact, you should actually kind of let those drive your campaign a little bit, because they actually, um, if you don't complete very many of those grudges, you'll find that suddenly your faction, you know, starts to have much more uh, difficulty with different things. Now, keeping your faction happy by, um, you know, keeping grudges out of that book is a good thing because it improves your buildings and everything else. Now, I often will put this uh, runesmith right in the army right away, and then you go scrap with these guys. Now, Ungrim's initial army starts with a few units of slayers, now you have some dwarf warriors, but you also have some quarrelers, uh, some iron drakes and thunderers. So you actually have like four units that have um, missiles, and then the uh, slayers are really, really good for uh, for cleaning things up. So. Uh, I tend to fight these battles manually most of the time, but you could just auto-resolve it if you like. And we'll then get a few different options here. So you can execute and loot, you get a bit of both gold, both gold and treasury, uh, so a little bit of money. Or you can basically improve your province. I, especially in the early game, tend to select this option because growth in this region is quite slow. And one of your major early focuses wants to be taking Nashrak's Lair and getting this province leveled up. So let's continue along here, see if we can get right in here right away and we are able to do that. So let's get rid of these and we're just going to straight up occupy this settlement. Do that because it knocks a grudge out of our book too right away. So we get a little bit of money, we get some old gold and we're here with uh, with Ungrim again. Now, one of the main um, faction benefits that you get with Ungrim is this piece called Oathbound. So it reduces how much it costs to construct Slayer buildings, and it re redu uh, reduces the amount you pay to recruit Slayers, and improves your speed of your um, your units overall. For Ungrim specifically, uh, if you go restless. look at his um, pieces. He actually pays less money for Slayers and improves their attack and then has this ability called Journey's End. Journey's End is really good because it means that you don't lose um, individual units or individual like guys from the unit until the HP of the whole unit um, goes underneath 75%. So it's really quite good for, uh, for Slayers and keeping them in play. So I tend to, eventually, you want to fill Ungrim's army with slayers. You get huge bang for your buck by doing that, uh, and it's really quite uh, quite good in that sense. Now, I tend to almost always get that. You've got several different options here. Now, imp 
uh, improving or decreasing the construction cost for uh, settlement buildings is, is pretty good. There is a lot of corruption in the game right now, so this is often a good thing. I actually tend to get this because um, when you fill his army with slayers, uh, you sometimes end up fighting battles that uh, you might not necessarily want to, to fight manually. You want to resolve it and just like leaving Ingram there to slowly take the uh, or wear the army down is, is okay, especially for, uh, for new players to do. Uh, especially, and if you're not super confident with siege battles, that's a good choice to start with. Um, ultimately, this is probably the the uh, best option here. So we'll pick that one, and then we have a uh, runesmith. So we'll just start leveling him up too. Now that's kind of the very beginning, but we go over here and we can actually build things in in Kerkadrin. So can't really build much here. A lot of people will build this building. Uh, just to get access to grud grudge throwers because they're quite um, quite good units um, but for uh, and th that's a good unit for the dwarves overall but for Ungrim's group the one of the biggest things that you can do is improve your defenses here or just start increasing the growth this area takes quite a while to level up I just about always build the growth building there we got the growth building here we want to get this province leveled up because it's, this is going to be our main area to start with. Now there are a couple of other things just to recognize about Ungrim's starting position. Um, he has a starting position that is okay, um, partially because Karak Kadrin is quite a um, good city to defend, um, but there is quite a bit of these like kind of snaky paths in here so it can be a little bit hard to get around without using the underway um, so that can be a bit annoying but there are a lot of factions in this area there are a lot of green skin factions um, that can cause a lot of trouble for you so there's uh, these guys the red eye you start off at war with them but just to the uh, the north you've got some ogres and you have um, the bone rattlers azag is up here um, Skarsnik is close by, you've got the Von Karsteins just down this way, so very much like powerful enemies in the area. So one of the other really good things to do with um, with um, Ungrim's faction is you, you kind of scrap with the, uh, the Red Eye guys, because they're pretty, pretty weak to start with. Um, but the problem is, is that they go all the way down here, and this can be just like a little bit annoying to get to. And then you have another Dwarven faction that's over here, so you don't typically want to go to war with them. Um, I often will will come over here and just beat these guys up a little bit. Um, even sometimes, you know, taking this settlement or, uh, or just sacking it repeatedly to level up Ungrim. Coming down here and scrapping with the vampires a little bit in the early game is really good because one, the vampires can get really strong really quickly in some playthroughs. Um, so keeping them a little bit weak can be a good thing. The empire can build up a little bit and then can usually handle them. Um, but the vampires are primarily melee units and in the early game you just straight up outclass them in every way with with the, your slayers so it's really you, you tend to have some pretty pretty easy battles in the early game there um but overall um this campaign is about keeping ungrim in play leveling him up leveling up Karak kadrin and that gives you kind of your early game stuff now later on you're continuing going through the grudges you want to keep the grudges out of the book now it does there is a benefit for not doing things with the great book of grudges and so you can see the severity I'm currently at 37 um, which I do still get some bonuses but you see the very last things there says on turn start a low chance that slayers will be added to the regiments of renown so if you go into the regiments of renown you actually have a small chance to basically add units in here um, giant slayers are extremely good in the early game um, 
So get, if you can get your hands on even one or two of those units out of here, it's really powerful for you. And then you also have some uh, commandments here right away. Again, we want to level this area up. I picked the growth one. And then the dwarfs have some very interesting tech tree choices. Um, there are lots of different uh, ways to to take this. You can go this way and start to build up your you know, your ranged units and things like that. We know that this faction is ultimately built on the Slayer units, particularly for, for Ungrim's army. So going into this section and working towards, you know, upgrading the different um, melee units that you have can be really valuable. I often actually will end up just going for money because building up your your funds in the early game is really good you want to invest almost all of your money getting Karakadrin uh, rolling because once you get this well fortified and set up this is a really quite strong region and so for now we'll uh, take one more look at the diplomacy to start with and then advance the turn so you can see right off the bat most of these unit or most of these areas are like you know not super super strong compared to us, but there are just a lot of them in the area that do get strong pretty quickly. So you've got Skarsnik and Azag, and yeah, they they uh, tend to build up there pretty quick. Um, one thing about the Dwarves and, and Ungrim's faction specifically is that they don't have any corruption mechanic, um, but you will have to potentially deal with corruption quite a bit because of the proximity to the vampire factions um, there's actually another vampire faction you can kind of see it over this direction too so um, depending on which areas you're uh, fighting in if you're fighting against vampires you will have to stay in those regions a little bit longer just to clean up the corruption um, that they leave behind and we'll take one last look at the Oath gold here quickly and just As look at a know, few different well, options. The power of the Dawi has reverberated through these mountains. Yes, that's nice. So if you go to the forge, there are a whole bunch of different options for you to select here. Um, you can forge these different items, different um, you know pieces that you can you can get access to. Um, Early on, I don't worry about these too much. I tend to uh, just build up the Oath Gold and, and then uh, worry about it later. We've got this army kind of up and going here now. But remember, you can actually jump over the mountains. But when you do that, you actually can't move any further. So just keep that in mind if you are going to, uh, to use that. And so that's kind of about just about all I've got for this one. Um, you know, if you like the content, feel free to leave a comment, uh, like the video, and subscribe to the channel for, for more in the future. Appreciate you watching.